In this video, I would like to discuss the empirical rule. Empirical rule has another name, which is called 68, 95, 99.7 rule. And this rule works for normal distribution only and is a method to divide the normal curve into pieces. So first of all, the mu, mu is the mean, right? Mean is the center of the curve. And then sigma, sigma is standard deviation that describes the spread of the curve. So for the 68, we have the mu right in the middle, 68%. Look at the blue writing. So 68% is mu plus or minus one standard deviation. That means you stand right in the middle, right in the center. So that is the mu. And then look at the, look at the blue. You take one step to the right, one step to the left. That captures 68% of the area. 68% of what? What is the total area under this normal curve? The total area is 100%. First, you stand right in the middle, one step to the right, one step to the left. One step means standard deviation. You capture 68% of the area. Since the graph is symmetrical, we have 34% plus 34% equals to 68, right? 68 divided by 2 is 34. So one step to the right, one step to the left, you have 34% sorry you have 68 percent and then next you are standing right in the middle you take two steps to the right and two steps to the left that captures 95 percent so in the graph you have 34 plus 34 plus 13.5 plus 13.5 equals to 95 all right and then the next one is 97 you have mu right in the middle you take three steps to the right and three steps to the left that captures 99.7 percent of the area so since this is only 99.7 it's not 100 percent yet we still have 0.3 percent right so if you take 100 minus 99.7 that equals to 0.3 you take 0.3 divided by 2 then you have 0 0.15 so you still have some left over half on the left and half on the right ends and if you add up all the pieces you have a uh, hundred percent so let's uh draw a picture for each of these so the first one is a uh, 68 so 68 let me draw 68 you have right in the middle right and then uh you have a bell curve let's uh, use the orange for the bell curve so this is um, right in the middle and then you have a bell curve and then 68 so you take one step to the right and one step to the left so that is 68 right so this is 68 percent and then we shape this region and then 95 percent so we draw another graph 95 percent we have another graph right here and then here is my bell curve 95 percent is you have right in the middle so that is mu two step to the left and two step to the right so this is 95 percent and then the last one is 99.7 you have another bell curve and then this time you take three steps to the left and three steps to the right if you are hand write everything it is hard to make the graph symmetrical so that is 99.7 percent if you take a picture from the internet or from any textbook they have a very good picture so this is 68 95 99.7 this is a mu plus three sigma, and then mu minus three sigma, and then the last one is a mu plus two sigma, and then mu minus two sigma, and then you have this area, and then the first one is um, you have mu plus sigma, and then mu minus sigma. So that's how the empirical works. So let's put this on an uh, example. The playing life of a sunshine radio is normally distributed with mean equals to 600. So mu is equals to 600. And then the standard deviation is equals to 100. And then what is the probability that a radio selected at random will last from 600 to 700 hours? Let's draw a simple graph. So this is a normal distribution. That means the empirical rule is applied. Again, that empirical rule applies to normal distribution only. So we have um, 600 right in the middle, right? And then you add 100 to the right. So that will be a 700. And then you add 100 to the left. So that will be a 500, right? And then you add two 100 to the left. So which is a 800. And then two step to the left. 
so that will be a 400 and of course you have a 300 and then this one uh, will be a 900 right and that's how you divide the graph into two big pieces so the first one is is from 600 to 700 so the first one they are asking for this so what percent is that that is 34 percent right so a which is 68 percent divided by two 68 percent divided by two you have 34 percent and then what about b from 500 to 800 so from 500 to 800 then you will go from here to there so that means you have to take the first piece so how how much is that the orange and the yellow and the orange and the blue so that will be um 68 percent and then plus one more right add this one as well so that means you add another 13.5 so if you don't know what 13.5 is you take a look above so that is 13.5 so you add 13.5 percent then that equals to your answer and then cc is at most 500 so at most 500 means the time let's say the time uh, is represented by x and then x is a continuous random variable that follows uniform that follows normal distribution i will just show you how to write this so x is a random variable that follows normal distribution with mean equals to 600 and then the standard deviation is equals to 100 and then at most 500 is probability that x is less than or equal to 500 so 500 500 we have 500 right here right 500 or below then we have that so what's the area the area so if you look up then that will be the 13.5 plus 2.35 plus 0 0.15 so 13.5 13.5 plus 2.35 percent and then plus 0 0.15 percent that is your answer and then what about at least 800 so d is probability that x is greater than or equal to 800 so that would be right here right so that would be this and then plus this so that would be um 2.35 plus 0 0.15 so 2.35 2.35 percent plus 0 0.15 percent so that is your answer okay let's do one more a vending machine automatically pours soft drinks into cups the amount of soft drink dispensed into a cup is normally distributed with mean equals to 7.6 and standard deviation 0 0.4. So we have mu equals to 7.6 and then standard deviation equals to 0 0.4. Estimate the probability that the machine will overflow an 8 ounce cup. So the graph is uh, a bell curve. We have 7.6 right in the middle. If you take one standard deviation to the right, that is equals to 8, right? You add 0 0.4, that equals to 8. So how, what is overflow? The cup is 8 ounce, right? So in order to overflow, overflow an 8 ounce cup, you have to put more than 8 into the cup. So that means you are looking for this area, right? So uh, what, what is the area? So A, you have a mean right in the middle. So here is my logic. So first of all, I have a bell curve and then I have 7.6 right in the middle. So without applying the empirical rule, I know that I have 50% on the on the left and then 50% on the right that equals to 100% and then I have to make a cut in here. So after this cut, I sacrifice 34%. So this is the area that I am looking for. So that is a 50% minus 34% that equals to 16 percent so that is the answer of a and then b b is not overflow so overflow is 16 percent not overflow is the opposite of 16 so you take a hundred percent minus 16 percent that is the probability of not overflow which is 84 percent so this is overflow this is not overflow so C is you load 850 cups into the machine. How many cups do you expect to overflow? So 16% of the total will be overflow. Then you take 850, you multiply 0 0.16. So what is that equal to? A50 times 0 0.16. That equals to 136 cups. So these cups will not overflow. So these cups will, oh, sorry, these will overflow. So 
that many cups will overflow. So that is the answer of Park C and that is also the end of this video. If you think my instruction is helpful, let me know in the comment section below. Please like the video, subscribe to my channel, share these videos out to your friends. Appreciate your help. As always, signing out for now.